It's summer and we're on the road again. Traveling roads we've been on before and looking for new ones. I love my bike. Dual Sport says it all. It lets you ride legally on the pavement, but it handles like a dream in dirt and on rocky roads. Our first destination in Idaho's central wilderness is the very deluxe resort, the Diamond D Ranch, 30 miles north of the Salmon River. The owner is an old friend of Nadine's that she hadn't seen in many years. Our route takes us up Jordan Creek to the Sunbeam Gold Mine. This mountain is being slowly carved away to get that yellow metal. Except for the road and a few private inn holdings, it's all wilderness. A wonderful place to ride. these dusty roads is you become an object of dust. Some people wonder why would we carry a little portable ice chest like this along? Seems like not a reasonable thing to do. But then again if you stop at a convenience store just before your campsite fill it with ice and with beverage then it makes the camping so much more pleasant. What would you say about that? <laughs> There's nothing like a Lima Rita at the end of the day. The Bay Horse State Park surrounds the old Bay Horse gold mining area. Besides organizing the old mining artifacts, the state's built an off-road trail system for motorcycles and ATVs. Loaders as we are, we decline to play in the dirt. Well, it looks kind of fun and it'd be fun to ride around in here, so. And I'm not quite sure why we're not doing it today because we have another hundred miles to go. Oh, yeah. Idaho and Montana's backcountry belongs to the wildlife. We are just visitors passing through. North of Chalice, we head toward the mountains on the Morgan Creek Road. This takes us through working ranches and the relics of old ones. We're riding along on these gas-powered machines, but looking at these old buildings reminds us that the pioneers and settlers before us built their lives with the labor of their bare hands and the use of plain old-fashioned horsepower, that of, of real horses. Aha, the perfect setting for a fashion show. Oh, if only I had my best apron. Once we cross over the pass, we head down Panther Creek. This area has had ranching and mining activity for over a hundred years but it still has a great sense of wilderness. These bighorn sheep are concerned 
but not really skittish when we stop to watch them. Panther Creek empties into the main Salmon River, just a little west of Shoup. This part of the river gets lots of use by floaters and fishermen. There's a new kind of gold mining here now. Instead of digging up the river bed and banks for that yellow ore, the guides and rafting companies extract dollars directly from the tourists and adventure seekers. These folks are doing a day trip on this stretch just to enjoy the wilderness and a little bit of mild white water. A little further downstream, rafters put in for about a hundred miles of real white water adventure on this river of no return. The only thing that does return are the salmon. They swim back upstream for a couple of hundred miles from the ocean to spawn up here. From North Fork, we head north to Gibbonsville and then east over the Big Hole Pass into Montana. This clear-cut logging on private land leaves the forest looking pretty bleak. <laughs> that means there's just no forest. The technology of logging has really changed since the old days of two men on a saw. These special rigs, one man can do the work of ten. Out of the mountains now, we head east across the Big Hole Valley toward the little town of Wisdom. On our way south out of Wisdom to Reservoir Lake, we have a tragic accident. The portable cooler slips off the rack and gets caught in the wheel. Now we head southwest over Bannock Pass and the Continental Divide again. This pass is so gentle that they once ran a railroad over it. Now, back to Idaho. It's a motel night in Salmon for a shower and a restaurant meal. Ooh, what a treat. Our plan to cross over the Magruder Corridor comes to a rude halt because of the fire. But, another adventure pops up. We meet a man at the Connor gas station who's built a castle. That's right, a castle. It sits on the bank of the Bitterroot River and shows how the determination and skill of one man can accomplish a really major creation. Some folks might call him a little bit loony, but I think he's just a talented artist. He's taken this medieval theme to the extremes with all the decor. It does cross my mind that we might be led downstairs and locked up in some dark dungeon. But his fantasy has a much more cheery outcome. Nope, no dungeons here. Just a beautiful deck and garden. Perfect for the wedding he just did here. Quite by chance, we picked the road from Hamilton, Montana, over to Anaconda, and it goes over Skalhaho Pass. What a great road that takes us to a nice campground on Georgetown Lake 
just west of Anaconda. We are here because we sort of headed north. We've had several detours on this trip, and we headed north out of Salmon with the idea that we would go back, we would return to the Magruder Quarter and do it the opposite direction than we did it last year. And But when we got to Connor, we found out that the Magruder Quarter was closed. But right now we're camped on a small lake and about 100 yards from us right now is a very old, very old female moose who um, is clearly unconcerned about people camping on a lake that she's probably been coming to all of her life. And um, she just sort of like uh, uh, settled down about 100 yards from here, about 10, 15 yards from the lake itself, and um, is just resting after having a, a little grazing time and lots of pictures taken of her by many people who saw her. How was your ride today? It was a spectacular ride. Well, it was a wonderful ride. All of our rides are wonderful rides. I mean, there's just not anything to not enjoy. Um, the castle? Yes, we stopped. We had a wonderful little side tour of, the, of Sir Wayne's castle in um, Connor, Montana, of all places. A most unusual place and man who um, I just it was just a gift to meet and a really really fun and I hope we meet him again too. Oh dearest, here's your morning cup of blood. Here's a little wisdom tip for men. Bring her coffee in bed. It goes a long way to building some tolerance in her for your other shortcomings. Those ones that she'll notice later when she opens her eyes. Let's see that famous smile. <laughs> oh dear, you've got a camera on me. Who does your hair? Today's Anaconda shows its heritage as a really rich copper mining town. In its heyday, about a hundred years ago, it was the biggest copper producing site in the world. When the price of copper fell in the 70s and other countries produced more and cheaper, Anaconda began to close down. What was left was one of the biggest toxic waste sites in America. Decades later, the region is pretty cleared up and the local economy is based on agriculture and tourism. Now we're following the East Fork of the Salmon River to a campsite just below Mount Bora. I like this stark and dry place. It's ringed by the high mountains and yet we're in the high elevation desert. This is the daily routine. Put it up, take get it up. down. Put it up, take it down. Get it up, get it down. Lucky we don't have to do this in the rain today. Well, we haven't had to do it in the rain yet. My goodness, it's been a lovely trip. No rain. This is always the sad part and the tent collapses. <laughs> Unfortunately, a sudden shift of gravity causes Nadine to lose her balance and take a tumble. Good thing we're at a full stop here. The 
the signs at Mount Bora show the extent of the 1983 earthquake. I'm certainly glad I wasn't here to see that. We're sort of running low on gas and certainly not enough to get over to Sun Valley, so we go to Mackey and join up with a group of real bikers. Over the Lost Trail Road, we make our way to the bright lights and glitter of Sun Valley, and then for the last leg home. These are familiar roads, and as we roll, we feel sort of sad that the trip's winding down. No more new places to explore on this trip, but there'll be more. Really happy to have done this trip, and it took me to places that I, I just didn't know that I was going to go to. <laughs> not only geographically but mentally and emotionally too. Places, was, were there places you wanted to go or didn't want to go? Uh, it, it wasn't a matter of want or not want, it was just a matter of that's where I found myself and when I found myself there I just tried to be there and I and I did and I, I'm glad, I'm just glad. It was a good trip. But now I'm looking forward to getting home, seeing the dog, doing my email, having that little puppy curl up next to us in the bed. That's, that's the one nice thing to look forward to in life. There's nothing else. Are you happy? Are you happy?